So the decision I have to make is, do I drink this coffee when I'm already probably too hyper? I think the answer is yes. Cheers. Hi, it's Andrew here from Time and Tide. I am sitting here in our headquarters in a most comfortable position with the most unusual watch position of the Vacheron Constantin Historique American 1921. And I will explain why that is later in the video. This video is about five things that I have learned about myself, about watches, about this watch from wearing it for a solid week. I have worn this everywhere for a week. It's an Australian summer. I've worn it with these clothes. I've worn it with a t-shirt. I've worn it with board shorts. I have taken this thing to the ends of its capabilities and I have some stuff to tell you. Let's get into it. Firstly, the first thing about this watch is the first thing you notice, aside from the fact that I'm wearing it in a very unusual position, and that is the changed dial orientation. We have 12 at a twisted by two, shall we say, two indexes to the right, and that explains why I'm wearing it in this position. In the video that you might have watched where I broke down this watch and talked about its history, we talked about the fact that it was worn by drivers in the 1920s when cars were a new and exciting thing. They had massive steering wheels. And at that time, I, I did think to myself, I'm gonna test this driving home today and see how easy it is to check the time when I'm driving my Subaru WRX back to Mount Eliza from Melbourne. So I did, I drove like this and I found myself having to twist my wrist and I thought that can't be the story. There must be more to it. So I chatted to the team and said, how did this work? How does this help you read the time when you're driving as we have put out into the world? And the answer of course, is that steering wheels in 1920 were much bigger and they were actually commandeered from this position, which is why drivers wore watches in this position on their wrist. So I don't have a steering wheel of this size to test the theory with, but if I pretend I'm driving, you can see what I'm saying. This is in a perfect position to, to be read as you are driving your Model T Ford to the Hamptons or whatever you're doing. So that answered that. And that is absolutely the first thing about this watch that you should know. The orientation, the change orientation from 12 at what is traditionally 12 to 12 at two or thereabouts, actually it's quite accurately two I would say, is that until I could be an unintelligent human being, I could be an un unevolved human being. What I could not manage to do in a week was in my head change the orientation of the dial enough for me to know the time looking at it without cocking my head to the side. I am a Neanderthal because even on day seven, as the team were watching me try to understand the time at any given point. They're watching me do this. So the orientation is a very real thing. It's something that you will adjust to. I'm at day seven. I didn't, maybe day eight was gonna be the magical day when my brain rewired itself. I will never know because I've got to keep the watch back today. That's a real consideration. The change orientation changes the way you actually read the time and you may need to cock your head a little bit. So the orientation is something that you're really gonna to have to factor in as an adjustment period. To make matters more confusing, the subdial is actually plumb. So the zero or 60 mark, which begins the small seconds subdial is actually pointed to traditional 12. So you have, you have dually orientations on the dial. I didn't even notice that the first time I reviewed this watch. Again, that's an oversight on my part but it, it does lead to a little bit of time reading confusion for a small mind like mine. Maybe not for you. Now, closing out the first takeaway from this watch, in addition to the changed orientation of the dial, clashing with the traditional orientation of the small seconds, is the crown position. Because of course, the crown position is at two, and this is very unusual as well. In the same way that trying to read the time off the wrist in a microsecond takes a moment of adjustment, so does winding this watch. Of course, it's a hand wound movement, so you do need to actually interface with the crown. And I find its position here is, is quite hard to do with the ulna just underneath it. It's quite hard to do on wrist. So that's another small little detail. A takeaway is that you have to take this watch off to wind it, or I certainly did. The beauty of that though, is that you get to look once again 
at this open case back. <sighs> right, my second takeaway is something that I'm touching right now. The quality of this strap is simply peerless. I have never seen a brown leather strap of this quality. Uh, look, I, you would expect something pretty extraordinary at this price point and from a brand, from a Trinity brand like Vacheron, not that the Trinity really counts anymore, but I still, I think it deserves to be called that. It deserves to be in, in a, among very few or uh, uh, what's the tagline again? Um, one among not many, <laughs> it's not very memorable tagline, but a justified tagline because this strap is absolutely gorgeous. And I regret that I didn't mention it in my main review. It has a fume sort of tone to this strap. We have darker brown on the edges where there's a contrast light brown stitch right through to a very light brown in the center of the padded strap. So I thought the second takeaway is that this strap is amazing. Uh, other details that struck me as a takeaway point to mention are that the applied logo, which is something that you can miss at a glance in low light conditions like this. But over the week, I was constantly being pinged by this stunning applied logo, which stands out from the dial at the most unusual times. Number three, fit and feel. Now this is a 40 by 40 millimeter case, but it wears unlike any other watch I'm gonna propose that you have in your collection. It wears extremely flat and it wears very large. The soldered lugs allow the strap to, to really sit off the case and it, it allows it to sit very flat on your wrist. And what that allows is really quite a sensitive wrist feel to the material because this is in white gold and it is a lot heavier than a comparable steel watch. Now, because the watch wears so flat on the wrist, as you can see here, there is basically full contact on that case back. It pushes up against the ulna and you can really feel, which is that bone here in your wrist, you can really feel the heft of the gold. And also because the, the straps are attached to the soldered lugs, um, which protrude from the case, it just gives you this full contact, which is constantly giving you a body feedback that this is a different sort of watch on the wrist. And again, like I said, it sits quite snugly in my seven inch wrist up against the ulna, which is not something I'm used to, usually because um, the strap or the bracelet is giving you a little bit of a pocket around that point of the wrist. Small detail, but constantly giving me the feedback that this is not an ordinary watch on the wrist. Number four, the fourth takeaway wearing this watch every day for seven days was the sheer, almost monotonous number of questions and comments I had about this watch walking around. Often it's just a bit of a cocked head and a, a bit of a double take of what is that and that looks not quite right. So sometimes there wouldn't be a question or a comment, but a lot of the times it was simply, oh, what is that? How is that? What is this watch? Why is it wrong? Why is it skewed to the side? So really, and for me, there's not many better interruptions to my day than someone saying, hey, tell me about your watch. It's why I'm here. It's why Time and Tide exists. It's something we love to do. So be prepared to tell a story. Be prepared to give at least a little bit of a synopsis of what this watch is, what era it's from, what a glorious era of watch design. Because as I said in the longer video, the 1920s were just such a golden era for experimentation, creativity, for avant-garde ideas because you know we, we seldom see these kinds of executions today and it's a great thing to remind people of. So the fifth takeaway for the week relates to that last point about the fact that you will be asked about this watch. You will receive comments, you'll receive strange looks. I'm calling this a post peacock watch because while it definitely is a statement watch and while certainly to watch literate people, this is going to be something to receive a pat on the back for because you're, you're wearing something that is truly an exceptional marker of, of a great era. It's also a watch that instead of just impressing from the wrist or instead of just catching people's attention for its desirable nature, maybe you have a watch that there's a waiting list for, maybe you have a watch that is heavily jeweled, or maybe you have a watch in a precious material. All of these things are going to cause you to be noticed. However, what this watch will lead to is not just impressing someone or giving them a sense that you have a beautiful watch on your wrist. It's likely to lead to connection. And that's something that you need to be ready for because wearing a 1921 
is going to connect you with people who know watches. It's going to connect you with people who are starting to understand watches and might know that this is a watch harking back to another era. And it's likely to connect you with that person at the cafe who doesn't have any idea about watches and just wants to know why it looks weird. So if you're not prepared for that, this is not the watch for you. I love that part of my week with the 1921 and I loved the way that wearing it for the week enriched my understanding of its original purpose and I think it elevated my experience of wearing a watch. So it promises much, it delivers more. I frankly don't want to give this watch back. Um, I will do my best to avoid Vacheron Constantin for the next 25 years and see how far I get. But uh, beautiful watch, thanks for watching. Would you be interested in stepping up your watch collection to include a piece that is so different and so uh, rewarding as the 1921? Tell us in the comments. Well done, Bacheron Constantin. Beautifully executed watch. What else would we expect?